All right, so right now the little critters, they run around and you get some points or you get minus points. Uh, and they do it over and over. There's, there's no limit, it just keeps happening. So we're gonna set up a time limit so that after a certain amount of time, uh, the, point, the points are accumulated. So the idea is they're gonna run around for some amount of time. When the time runs out, then remember we have an S1 boss level. And then the boss, it's going to be its own thing that's going to come at you, and you're going to have to tap it and kill it, and it'll have X number of hit points and such. But before we get to the boss, well, this first wave of characters has to come by. So this is when the uh, timer comes into play. So let's go back to frame one of the actions layer of this scene. This is something we're going to set up early on. So before this code for the ghost stuff, the sprites, we're going to go back to the somewhere to the beginning. Uh, we had here current score, game score. That's all the stuff that was there to set up the basics of the of the game. We want to set up a uh, our time limit. So let's say we'll put it after the game score before we start adding our random number generators. Uh, let's add a little section here for for timer code for timer so there's a there's a section here where it's going to be all about the, the the timer we'll start it off with 10 seconds uh, you probably want more time when it's your real game, but actually we'll put it even shorter. We'll just put, um, I don't know, maybe like three seconds. When we're testing this, these long time periods are going to be way too long. You're going to be trying to test it. You're waiting too long for it to end. So in the beginning, some short times are going to be fine. So VAR to create a variable, we'll call this time timer limit colon number equals and then here whatever amount of time so just like testing it super fast three it's you're only gonna have three seconds to battle these sprites you can change it to whatever other values you want but for testing a short value is good max time limit to battle wave one of the sprites in seconds. So if you wanted, you know, two whole minutes for wave one, how many seconds would that be? 120 seconds for two whole seconds of battling the wave. Next. Um, timer display underscore txt dot text equal to string parentheses timer limit well this looks familiar like line 17 game score text equals my current score this is another concept where on screen we will have numbers that are counting down so here I'm writing the code first and then I'm creating the box on screen either or will work to create the box then write the code uh, both are necessary of course having the text box plus the code uh, so let's actually pause right here we want to go to the back to the back to the scene back to the visuals to make a little box timer display so I'm going to close my Actions panel for a moment. I'm going to go back to my Text Boxes layer. We made a box at the top here of Text that's going to display the score. I want a box to display the time. So I'm going to get again the Text tool, Dynamic Text, Sans Family. And maybe put it over here somewhere. Hmm. 
So I've got another text box. So I've got another text box here. This one is going to be my countdown timer. Again, make sure it's dynamic text. Uh, the font is sans. And whatever size, I'd put it in the corner there. It needs an instance name. Timer display text. So timer display text. That's the one that's going to count down. On screen, it'll start at whatever time you had it, and it'll count down. All right, Sabrina and Ben, a little uh, quieter over there, please. So here then, um, that's what I need visually. Code-wise, let's get back to the code. That's what we had here in the code. We're saying uh, display on screen the time limit. I'm going to do, you can do a quick test if you want here. The time is not going to count down yet, but at the very least, you should confirm that instead of saying why, it should change to the number three. It's not, a, it's not going to count down. That's coming up next. Uh, but if it doesn't change your number right there, well, we'll pause and make sure it's working. So when I run my project, I go to start, and on the top right corner it says 3. It never changes, because that's next. But at the very least here, this text box with this instance name displays the current time, the limit of the time limit. Okay, well, to actually have it count down, uh, ActionScript has some code that can start a timer and then start to decrement that number uh, so that it then goes down to zero. And when it's at zero, then do something else, such as take us to S1 boss, different scene. So after this part here, well, we'll also say and display the maximum time, which is timer limit. On screen, text box, dynamic text box with instance name. So this line of code here, what it's doing is it's displaying on screen in that dynamic text box. It's got an instance name. OK, enter a couple of times, and then we'll create a variable called game timer colon so we've created variables they've stored numbers there's a special data type over here built in called timer capital T equal to new space timer capital T parentheses so we're creating a variable we're creating an object that will hold data of type timer. Then we're creating a new instance of the timer object. This is a built-in action script uh, construct where we tell it um, at 1,000 milliseconds. So you see it's saying here delay comma repeat count. 
the delay. We can have timers that are keeping track one second at a time, two seconds at a time, ten seconds at a time. We want these timers to, to sort of like click every 1,000 milliseconds, which is one second. And we want it to repeat the number of times that our maximum time limit is, which is timer limit. So for our notes, we'll say create a variable with timer data type. And assign it, that's the equals, assign it a new instance of the timer object. Set the timer object to click at 1,000 milliseconds and repeat up to our time limit, which is timer limit. We also need to keep track. Um, it's going to be a countdown. The timer is going to start at zero and go on and on and on. So it's going to go up. The timer is going to go positive. What we've got here. Uh, we're actually trying to count down. We're starting at the maximum amount of time and counting down to zero. So next we say var game timer elapsed. How much time has elapsed? Colon number one. Our timer will elapse one unit at a time, one second at a time. Variable to keep track of elapsed time. Internal timer. So that's game timer dot start. Up here we are setting up the parameters. We're gonna have a timer. It's gonna last three seconds. It's gonna click every second. But here is line 36 is where we actually then say, okay, start it. Start keeping track of time. We have a dot start and eventually we'll have a dot stop. We've ended the amount of time, so therefore we go down to, you know, we've gone down to zero, so we stop the timer. Every time there's a click in the timer, we need to do something, which is to update on screen the time, starting at three, then two, then one, then zero. And when we reach the end of the time, we'll deal with that. So, next line. Event listener to keep track of every tick or every click of the timer. Game timer dot add event listener. So just like we had the event listener for tapping a sprite, and the result of tapping a sprite was running a function, we have an event listener for every time that there's a click or an increment of the time, then we, uh, we rerun a function. So the event listener is going to have timer event dot timer, all in capital letters, 
comma. FN game timer countdown. So this looks very similar to what we've already done. We've got an object, we've got an event listener. The the event is different, but the but the result of then running a function is the same. So we're saying every time the timer does its thing, run the function game timer countdown. So next line we have to define function fn game timer countdown parentheses colon void curly braces and function game timer countdown Previously inside of this function we had event touch event, but this time we're, we're dealing with timer events. Timer event, singular, not plural. Previously we had a function that was saying once you've tapped this, do that. Now here's a function, every time the time clicks, do this. Well, we need to do a few things. On screen, we need to display the time changing. And we need to keep track that the time is changing. So the time is changing. I mean, we display what the time is. We can just copy it from here, line 25. Timer display, set the text to be whatever the current timer limit is. Um, we're going to do something similar to that. So I'm just going to copy that so I don't mistype it. But what's going to be different is, it's going to say timer limit minus game timer elapsed. So we're saying on screen, we're going to display as a string, as text. We're going to take whatever the time limit is, 3 seconds, and subtract how much time has passed. 1 second. 3 minus 1 is 2. We're currently at 2 seconds. 2 seconds have passed. 3 minus 2, 1. There's 1 second left. Three is the max. Yeah. Capital E. Capital E. Okay. Yes. I should just copy and paste it. Yep. Capital E. Yes. So the name of that variable matches that variable. Timer limit. So this is going to display on screen the actual time counting down. That's why we've got the minus. You're starting at the maximum time and you're subtracting one second every time. And then lastly, we have game timer elapsed plus plus so we say on screen show the current time which is max time minus current time and then after that's done then increase current time one more second has passed in the game. Two more seconds, three more seconds. So there's this maximum time limit, which is getting decreased based on how much time has passed. Save it and run it. Check for errors. It's not, it's not complete yet. We have one more thing to do, then we'll wrap for the day. But at the very least here, it's going to show the timer counting down.
All right, so I'm running it on mine just to check it out. I press start, I see time limit three, two, one, and then it's uh, gonna go to zero. So it hasn't stopped it yet, but it's on its way here. If you wanna test this a little bit more, remember we set it to time limit of three. Just for fun, you can put 33 to see it fully count down from 33. But I wouldn't leave it at 33 when I'm actually testing it, because I don't want to wait 33 whole seconds for this to actually count down. I started it with, right here with only three seconds to see it's working. But then if you really want the full uh, majesty of it, yeah, put it at a higher value and see it actually decrease. So for example, I'm starting right here. 33, 31, etc. Question, guys, here? Jason and uh, Gary, any questions here? Oh, I just misnamed my box. I thought it was one Oh, okay. So I'm going to keep it at three seconds. Three seconds is good enough for testing because it this is still going. I started it at 33 and it's barely down to five. So just for testing, it, it's way too much time. Three seconds is good enough. It'll get to three, and then it won't know what to do. It won't actually do negative numbers. Well, the very last thing we'll do, then we'll wrap for the day, is, OK, when the time runs out, um, take me to the next scene. Take me to the boss scene. We've got an event listener listening for every time there's a click of the time. We're going to need an event listener to keep track of when the time actually runs out. When it runs out, then do some things like move us to the next scene, which is coming up right here. So next line, event listener to check when the timer runs out, move us to scene one boss. Game timer, add event listener, this is another timer event, but this time com timer complete. Comma, when the timer complete happens, then we run a function. Function game timer end. So this line looks very similar to the line 40. There's a timer that's doing its thing. Add an event listener to listen for something or wait for something. In this case, the event that we're listening for is that it's complete. Once it's complete, run a function. That function doesn't exist, so we define it. Function game timer parentheses colon void curly braces. Again, here's the repetitive part of it. And This has an event associated with it, a timer event. So internally, here's the funny thing, that internally it's keeping track of time and eventually it'll run out of time. But then it doesn't know what else to do. So just like we had game timer start, we're going to have game timer stop. OK, your job is done as a, as a timer, so stop. Stop using up memory. Stop keeping track of this. Stop the timer. Stop the internal timer. 
Okay, besides that, then I want to move her to the boss level. Then move us to the boss scene. So we've seen this before. Movie clip, capital C, parentheses, dot, go to and play. We saw that it's just the way it is. We have to then say movie clip this root. And we're going to go to frame one, comma, the name of the scene. In my case, mine is called uh, S1 boss with, with that particular spelling. And that's what we need for this to work now. Now it knows that when the timer is complete, do something. The something is basically stop keeping track of time and then move us to the other scene. You can save and test that. Uh, well, actually, before you test it, maybe think about uh, this amount of time. So it'll be a very, very short level at three seconds, but it's good enough for the testing. Uh, but then you'll want uh, longer times as you work. So go ahead and save it and test it. See if you get uh, see if you get after the uh, three seconds. See if it goes to the boss level. I'm going to test mine. No errors came up. If any of yours come up, remember to double click your error to take you to the line number. Now read the error and see if it makes sense and then go to the line number. So if it says access of undefined property, that often means you misspelled something. If it says access of undefined property game timer, you might have misspelled game timer. Okay, so on mine, I'm going to go to start. I've got the three seconds. Three, two, one, went to the boss. Then it stops right there because there's a stop command here and nothing else proceeds. The game is stuck at this point. That's fine. At least if it goes here, then you're good. This eventually will move around and will tap in and get points and all that. Question or help? Okay, I'll be there one moment. Okay, let me say everyone to everyone. So uh, Antonio and, and Ben, uh, or Anthony and Ben, just hold on one moment. Let me just say every, one thing to everyone at this moment. Again, keeping track of our time in the calendar, you know, it's very short when we're going to end things. So expect that I'm going to upload some videos with a couple more of the lessons of the code since we're physically not going to be able to be here for the next, you know, five days. Uh, I'm going to be uploading the next lectures to Canvas, so they'll be there later today. And I expect you to watch them and then see the end of the end of the project online, because on the 16th on Monday, we've got to start the next game. We won't have another day to continue this in person. You will have the time to complete your game until the 18th, but I've got to start the lecture for the next game because the last day of class is going to be the first. The last physical day of class is the first, which you know we're seeing we need as much time as we can for the coding. So expect to see some lectures on Canvas, uh, probably starting tomorrow over the weekend. You should watch those to see the, to do the next parts, which is to add music. Um, we've got the the little sprites running around. We've got keeping track of points. We've got. Uh, the timer. We need to add music, a couple of other things, and then the game is done. But we're not going to have time in person to do it, so we're going to have videos. I'll put them on Canvas. 
Uh, so don't uh, skip watching those because when we start on Monday, it's going to be a brand new project. But then you'll have time to work on uh, your game on your own time. Remember the library, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Unfortunately, no weekend time, but they'll be open today and tomorrow. And I hope you use the time there at the library. So we're going to stop the lecture at this point. Uh, I'm going to put a copy of my code into the folder in case you want to compare my code and your code. I'm going to upload this lecture video if you want to replay it. And then um, we'll have a little lab time to make sure it all works. And you should be working on um, adding your content to the game. Now, I did one last thing. I did uh, put the requirements of what the assignment is on Canvas. I'm going to look at that quickly, but you should have gotten a, a, an email that I sent that. So on Canvas, we've got the new assignment details. Tap Frenzy Project, due July 18th, 4 p.m., 20 points. The details of it are, well, you're going to make a folder for your project. You probably got that done. Check. You're going to create an Android project. Check. You've got that. Name it. You've got that. The size. You've got that. You're going to go to your various um, settings here. Output, uh, the general tab, the deployment tab, etc. We've done that. One thing that we didn't do and we won't have time to do in class is you will need to create your icons. I want to see real icons for your app, not the built-in one. So you're going to need to use some sort of graphic software to create those icons. Remember, those icons are found right here, File. Android settings, icons, it tells you right there. You need an icon of 36 by 36 pixels, 48, 192, and then you attach them right there. We have, uh, those are the ones you already saw. Here's some more requirements. Then, okay, you must have at least three scenes. Title scene, I don't know, this keeps jumping up here. Sorry about that. Title scene, help scene, good ending, bad ending, the boss scene, uh, yeah, it keeps jumping. So um, those lectures there of how to do those things that we haven't gotten to, the good ending and the bad ending, those will be uploaded later today. So you'll need to watch those. You must have a countdown timer. If you get it to work today, you've got it working. You must have background music and sound effects, as many as you want. Now that one is going to be part of the lecture. Um, so uh, check on the lecture that I'm going to add to Canvas. You must publish it. We've had the practice already of publishing that. Then we've got um, zip it all up together to upload it into Canvas. And you're also going to turn it in in person on in a USB drive um, on, on Wednesday. 20 points due Wednesday. You're going to be graded on what it asks for you right here. So no, nothing. Uh, nothing uh, secret of what you're getting graded on it's all right there but again starting on Monday we start the next game the rest of the lecture will be on canvas over the weekend general questions on the assignment okay so we'll have a little lab time to make sure your code works up until this point and then we'll come back on Monday in person but then you'll check lectures on canvas